In the cold, silent hours, when the world seems to stand still, the darkest facets of human nature often emerge from the shadows. This is a story not just of a man, but of a phantom that haunted the Interstate 65 corridor, leaving a trail of sorrow that would remain unsolved for decades. Harry Edward Greenwell, a name that would only be whispered in the annals of true crime long after his death, was finally unveiled as the I-65 killer through the lens of modern DNA technology. But who was Greenwell, really? And how did his true nature elude the grasp of justice for so long? The heart of America's Midwest was pierced by a series of brutal attacks that stretched from the late 1980s into the early 90s. Along the bustling Interstate 65 in Kentucky and Indiana, a series of crimes unfolded that seemed disconnected, random, but were all too deliberate. Women working alone at night in motels became the targets of unspeakable acts. Murder, sexual assault, and fear became the signatures of an unknown assailant who seemed to vanish into the night, leaving behind a trail of questions and a demand for justice that seemed to echo into oblivion. How could a serial killer operate with such impunity? What dark corners of the human psyche did Harry Edward Greenwell retreat into after each heinous act? And more perplexingly, how did he manage to evade the long arm of the law for not just years, but decades? These questions linger in the air, as haunting now as they were in the days following each gruesome discovery. This documentary seeks to unravel the mystery of Greenwell's life and crimes, to chart the course of an investigation that spanned years, and to understand the breakthroughs that finally brought his shadowy figure into the light. We delve into the chilling reality of a man who lived among us, his dual existence, and the advancements in forensic science that eventually answered the calls for justice from beyond the grave. As we embark on this journey, we invite you to ponder the depths of deception, the resilience of those who seek justice, and the evolving tools at our disposal to ensure that no crime remains hidden forever. How did Greenwell evade capture, and what does his story teach us about the complexities of human nature and the relentless pursuit of truth? Join us as we explore the dark legacy of the I-65 killer. Let's delve into the early life and crimes of Harry Edward Greenwell, bringing to light the complex dichotomy between his public persona and his clandestine activities that led him down a path of infamy. Harry Edward Greenwell was born on December 9, 1944, in Louisville, Kentucky, into what appeared to be an ordinary American family. However, the facade of normalcy began to crack early on, marking the inception of Greenwell's long and dark journey through the criminal justice system. By the tender age of 18, Greenwell had already encountered the law, arrested for an armed robbery in Louisville. This early brush with crime was a harbinger of the tumultuous path that lay ahead. In 1963, he was sentenced to a reformatory for two years, followed by five years of probation, a penalty that now seems a mere slap on the wrist, considering the gravity of his future offenses. Greenwell's criminal activities took a more sinister turn on February 23, 1965, when he was arrested in Jefferson County, Kentucky, on a sodomy charge. Despite these early indicators of his dangerous tendencies, Greenwell managed to find semblances of a normal life between his stints in prison. After being paroled from the Kentucky State Penitentiary in 1969, Greenwell's life took various turns, from tragic to seemingly stable. The death of his wife in a house fire in 1978 could have been a turning point for a man besieged by his demons. Instead, it marked the beginning of a new chapter as he soon remarried, blending his family with that of a 39-year-old single mother who had also known hardship. Greenwell's employment history was as erratic as his personal life. At some point, he found work as a railroad worker, a job that took him across the Midwest. This employment not only provided a veneer of respectability, but also the mobility that would later prove chillingly advantageous to his nefarious activities. His life, when viewed from outside, mirrored that of any working-class American, juggling responsibilities of family and work. Yet, beneath this ordinary exterior lay a deeply troubled and complex individual, 
capable of heinous crimes. The duality of Greenwell's existence is a stark reminder of the complexities that often lie hidden within individuals, his ability to maintain a semblance of normalcy to be a family man by day and a criminal by night raises unsettling questions about the nature of evil and the facades people maintain. It's this dichotomy between his public persona and his hidden life of crime that underscores the enigma of Harry Edward Greenwell. As we delve deeper into his life and the crimes that would eventually define his legacy, we are left to ponder how a man who once stood as a figure of stability could descend into such darkness, leaving an indelible mark on the communities he once moved among silently. The sequence of brutal crimes that unfolded along the Interstate 65 corridor in Indiana and Kentucky between 1987 and 1989 left an indelible mark on the communities they touched, revealing a pattern of violence that seemed almost methodical in its execution. The I-65 murders, as they would come to be known, were not only heinous in nature, but also posed significant challenges to law enforcement agencies tasked with piecing together the actions of a predator moving silently among them. On February 21, 1987, the serenity of Elizabethtown, Kentucky was shattered when 41-year-old Vicki Heath was found murdered at a Super 8 motel. The crime scene depicted a struggle, with a telephone ripped from the wall, signaling a violent confrontation. Heath had been sexually assaulted and shot, her body discarded behind the establishment like refuse. This brutal act would mark the beginning of a series of crimes that bore a chilling similarity. The horror would unfold again on March 3, 1989, when two hotel clerks fell victim to the same merciless hands. In Merrillville, Indiana, 24-year-old Margaret Peggy Gill, a night auditor at the Days Inn, was found dead, having been sexually assaulted and shot twice in the head. Her body was callously left in a back hallway of the motel. Just hours later, 34-year-old Jean Gilbert, a part-time auditor at a Days Inn in Remington, Indiana, met a similar fate. Like Gil, Gilbert was sexually assaulted and shot, her body left near the roadway, a grim discovery for an unsuspecting motorist the following morning. Both murders were linked by the use of a 22 caliber handgun and the theft of cash from the motels, painting a horrifying picture of the perpetrator's modus operandi. Adding to the complexity of the investigation was an attack on January 2, 1990 at a Days in in Columbus, Indiana. A 21-year-old hotel clerk was sexually assaulted, stabbed and robbed but survived the encounter. Her testimony and a composite sketch of the attacker added a crucial piece to the puzzle, linking her assailant to the murders of Gill and Gilbert through DNA evidence. The investigation into these crimes faced significant hurdles from the outset. The transient nature of the perpetrator who utilized the interstate system to facilitate his crimes and escape presented an enormous challenge. The lack of sophisticated DNA analysis techniques at the time further complicated efforts to identify a suspect, as did the varying jurisdictions involved. Each crime scene offered limited forensic evidence, and while similarities between the cases suggested a single perpetrator conclusively linking the crimes required advancements in forensic science that were years away. Moreover, the 1989 murders of Gill and Gilbert, along with the attack in 1990, indicated a boldness and escalation in the perpetrator's actions, suggesting he was growing more confident with each attack. Law enforcement agencies, operating with the technology and resources available at the time, struggled to connect these dots into a coherent picture of the killer. It wasn't until the advent of improved DNA analysis techniques that a breakthrough was achieved, linking the crimes together and eventually leading to the identification of Harry Edward Greenwell as the man responsible. The I-65 murders highlight the complexities and challenges of criminal investigations, particularly those involving serial offenders who exploit the vastness of the American interstate system to elude capture. 
The story of these investigations is a testament to the persistence of law enforcement and the evolving nature of forensic science, culminating in a posthumous identification that brought cold comfort to the families of the victims, forever altered by the actions of a man once hidden among them. The resolution of the I-65 murders, a series of heinous crimes that had long eluded law enforcement, was ultimately made possible through the revolutionary advances in forensic science, specifically DNA analysis. This technological breakthrough not only linked the disparate crimes to a single perpetrator, but also led to the posthumous identification of Harry Edward Greenwell as the elusive I-65 killer. The journey from the initial investigation to the eventual unveiling of the killer is a testament to the relentless pursuit of justice and the profound impact of DNA evidence in modern criminal investigations. For years, the I-65 murders remained a vexing enigma for investigators. Despite the collection of physical evidence from the crime scenes, including DNA, the limitations of forensic technology at the time meant that this evidence yielded yielded few actionable leads. The crimes, though clearly linked by modus operandi and geographic proximity, lacked the crucial genetic fingerprint needed to conclusively connect them to a single individual. The initial investigations were stymied by the absence of a match for the DNA samples in existing databases, leaving a trail that grew colder with each passing year. The turning point came with the advent of advanced DNA analysis techniques and the expansion of genetic databases. Forensic scientists were now able to extract genetic profiles from minute samples of biological material, vastly improving the chances of matching DNA from crime scenes with individuals or their relatives. This progress in forensic science was instrumental in revisiting the I-65 murders. In the case of Harry Edward Greenwell, it was the meticulous preservation of DNA evidence from the crime scenes that eventually paved the way for a breakthrough. Years after the murders, investigators submitted the DNA samples for analysis using updated techniques, which now had the capability to detect genetic markers that were previously indiscernible. The re-examination of the evidence revealed a genetic link between the crimes committed along I-65, firmly establishing that they were the work of a single individual. However, the most groundbreaking aspect of the investigation was the application of genetic genealogy, a technique that combines traditional genealogical methods with the analysis of genetic data to establish familial relationships. By comparing the DNA evidence from the crime scenes with public and law enforcement genetic databases, investigators were able to identify potential relatives of the suspect. This innovative approach led them to Harry Edward Greenwell, who by then had died of cancer in 2013. The identification of Greenwell as the I-65 killer underscored the impact of forensic science advancements not only in solving cold cases, but also in providing closure to the families of the victims. It demonstrated the potential of DNA analysis to bridge the gap between unanswered questions and resolution, offering a glimmer of justice in cases long thought unsolvable. The use of genetic genealogy in particular has opened new avenues for investigation transforming the landscape of criminal justice and highlighting the importance of preserving evidence for future analysis. The resolution of the I-65 murders through DNA evidence is a profound example of how perseverance in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds, combined with the evolution of forensic technology, can unveil the truth hidden within the genetic code. It serves as a beacon of hope for solving other cold cases, proving that with time, science can bring even the most elusive criminals to light and offer some measure of peace to those left in the wake of their crimes. The unveiling of Harry Edward Greenwell as the I-65 killer, decades after his crimes cast long shadows over the Midwest, brings into sharp focus the enduring pain of the families affected and the relentless pursuit of justice by law enforcement. Greenwell's legacy is not one of infamy, but a somber reminder of the victims and the tireless efforts to ensure their stories are not forgotten.
The resolution of this case underscores the critical importance of closure for the families involved and the broader implications for the field of criminal investigations. The nature of Greenwell's crimes, marked by brutality and a chilling disregard for human life, left indelible scars on the communities he terrorized. For the families of the victims, the years without answers compounded their grief, leaving wounds that seemed destined to remain open. The posthumous identification of Greenwell as the perpetrator does not erase the pain or restore the lives taken so senselessly, but it does provide a measure of closure. It affirms that the victims have not been forgotten, that their lives mattered, and that justice, though delayed, is unyielding. For the law enforcement community, the resolution of the I-65 murders is a testament to the dedication and perseverance that underpins their work. Detectives, forensic scientists, and all who contributed to the case over the years were driven by a commitment to justice, even when the trail seemed to vanish into the ether. The breakthrough achieved through advanced DNA analysis and genetic genealogy is a vindication of their enduring efforts and a signal to criminals, past and present, that time does not diminish the resolve to seek justice. This case also highlights the evolving role of forensic science in criminal investigations. The application of genetic genealogy represents a seismic shift in how cold cases can be approached, offering new hope where traditional investigative routes have been exhausted. It underscores the importance of preserving evidence and the potential for even the smallest clue to become the key to unraveling long-standing mysteries. As forensic technologies continue to advance, the horizon of what is possible in solving crimes expands, reaffirming the principle that justice has has no expiration date. The story of the I-65 murders, while closed in one sense, continues to resonate as a powerful narrative about the resilience of the human spirit, the relentless pursuit of truth, and the profound impact of scientific innovation on the quest for justice. It serves as a beacon of hope for other cold cases, reminding us that the pursuit of justice is an ever-evolving journey illuminated by determination and the advances of science. As we reflect on the legacy of Harry Edward Greenwell and the lives he affected, let us also acknowledge the strength of those who endured the long wait for answers and the professionals who never wavered in their commitment to uncovering the truth. The story of the I-65 murders is a poignant chapter in the annals of true crime, one that reaffirms the importance of perseverance, the value of closure, and the unyielding power of justice. We invite you to subscribe and like this video to join us in exploring more stories of resilience, innovation, and the ongoing fight for justice. Together, we delve into the mysteries of the past with the hope of illuminating the truths of tomorrow.